By now, it should be no shocker to anybody that I am a pretty big fan of Japanese games. More specifically, I love me some Japanese RPGs. Now, this video in particular is not to question whether or not Japanese games have been stale, stagnant, the developers behind them need to adapt, or whether or not they are better compared to their Western brethren. This video in particular is to shine light on a recent game trailer from one of my favorite companies. That, of course, being Atlas. Atlas is quickly growing into one of my favorite publishers. They produce some of my most favorite and anticipated games coming out of Japan. And to be honest, compared to, well, a lot of Japanese companies out there, they actually treat their fans with love, respect, and know how to get a rise out of us if you, if you, if you. This did not need to happen. I don't know why this happened, but it did. This is a part of history. This right here, it didn't need to happen. It already happened. We got to move on, but you know what we're going to do? Man, do a double take at Atlas. You ain't slick, man. You ain't slick. I'm, I'm watching you. It's hard out in these streets with these localizations, man. You can't pull stuff like this. Only Legion like PS3 game. <sighs> Amongst the many franchises that Atlas owns, one series in particular always keeps me coming back for more, always gets me excited and pumped up for whatever the heck they're gonna do next, and that is Shin Megami Tensei, more specifically the sub-series Persona. I got introduced to Persona a couple of years ago when I was really in a rut on whether or not I should play more Japanese RPGs or get into Western RPGs, because when I mentioned earlier in the video, about the games being stale and stagnant, that was pretty much true coming from the mainstream side of things. But when you're looking at the niche guys like Atlas, Falcom, NIS, those people, they're producing some of the greatest RPGs that we've seen in the past couple of years. And the Persona series is one that I living adore from Persona 3, Persona 4, Persona 3 Portable, Persona 4 Golden, to the spin-off games on uh, Persona 4 Arena and Ultimax, to Persona Q Shadow of the Labyrinth on the 3DS. Man, I don't care what anyone says, I changed my opinion on this game. You know, you know how many times I listen to the Persona 4 Golden intro and I just want to dance along? Yo, these people got the greatest damn moves in the world. Like, I'm up. I'm hyped, man. What the hell is Kanji doing in that trailer? I don't. I am making a complete fool of myself. What am I doing? I got no moves. I got no moves like Jagger. Back in 2013, Atlas announced that Persona 5, the next main installment in the game franchise, amongst all the spin-offs and you know uh, ports and dual anime adaptations. Why do we have two Persona 4 anime? Hmm. And from when they announced it in fall 2013, up until now, we've seen basically nothing. All we got was this one animated trailer that was supposed to be released to show us of the game that was coming out in the last two months of last year. Because for the longest time, Persona 5 was set to come out winter 2014. We got until September 2014 and we've seen nothing on this game, man. I, I lost so much faith in it. I thought this game was a development hell. I thought that they were making damn Persona 4 for the PS4 at this point, you know, but, but, no, oh, god damn. This trailer for Persona 5. Now, I, I was gonna, I really was gonna make this coherent and actually go through all the things in the trailer, but you know what? Bump that noise. We're just gonna go straight off the cuff, talk about what comes off my head. So, okay, um, starting with uh, Persona 5, a lot of people were under the impression that since Persona 4 was the most successful entry in the franchise, that they were pretty much gonna do a carbon cut and paste job. Um, which really scared some people because they're thinking, hey, you know, some people weren't the biggest fan of Scooby-Doo for adults, which <laughs> kind of was. It was an awesome game, but ooh, I love those Scooby-Doo memes of Persona 4. They're, they're hilarious, man. You know, those were some of the fears that were raised. You know, are we just going to get Persona 4 again? Are we going to get something new? What's going to happen? But, you know, Atlas basically said, fuck your roof. Yeah, they tore the hell off of your roof and all of the doubts and the, the complaints, all that stuff. You know, you know how you throw stuff out the window, like throw all your complaints out the window or or leave them at the front door, as people would say. Nah, they tore the roof off the house and your spirit just basically floated away. It's like some crazy shit up in this bitch, man. 
But yeah, so that's what happened. After viewing the trailer of Persona 5, it definitely has a different theme than Persona 4, which is what I expected. I mean, a lot of people were thinking it'd be the same. I'm like, guys, unless it's in the same series, it's not gonna try to do exactly what the last one did. If you guys remember the first teaser trailer for Persona 5, there was a particular line that ended off the trailer, basically saying, you are slave, want emancipation. And that got some people thinking, like, whoa, what is going on here? And then Atlas later clarified that Persona 5, the main theme of it would be about people who are, if I remember correctly, discontent with their lives. They're, they're, they don't like what's going on in the world. Some, some crazy stuff like that. You know, so I got to myself thinking, whoa, man. I'm getting a real weird vibe from this. I'm getting a definite vibe up in this. They're discontent with life. They're not happy with injustice. Ooh, man, I'm thinking this is gonna be like definite the video game. There was a definite video game, speaking of which, it was on the DS. I think there were like two of them or something. Why would someone make a definite video game? That's beyond me. Kind of fucked up too. And after viewing this trailer, I definitely can see what Atlas was talking about when they said it's about people who are not really happy with their lives. So starting off the trailer, you see the main protagonist. Basically, this dude is like Detective Conan, Phantom Thief, Kaito Kid, 1412, Arsene Lupin. You know, this dude is coming out here, jumping out the window, pew, and then all the cops are there and it's just like, whoa. That guy is cool. New best main in the Persona franchise right there. So immediately there, I was just like, okay, I like this guy. And then from there, we saw just a bunch of crazy stuff. You know, we saw a bit of like the, um, what I presume were gonna be the anime cutscenes in the game. I really hope they have anime cutscenes in the game and not just, you know, uh, put this for some promotional thing that they're gonna include on like a game or something. <laughs> Atlas, stop it. Stop it, man. But yeah, so I, I thought that they were just gonna do that. Um, but just so much, it just raises so many questions right now. So we might as well start off with um, the actual the gameplay. Um, anybody who's played the last Atlas game on consoles will notice this looks stylistically, is that a word? It looks very similar to Catherine. Catherine came out on the PS3 360, I think back in like 2011. And, you know, Catherine had a really unique art style, and I definitely got some vibes in this game um, from Catherine, but of course some things were different. This game's using a brand new engine and there are differences, but there's just something about it. Everything in the Persona 5 world seems more dynamic and less stagnant than the last game. And when you think about it, the last time we saw a Persona game, a new entry in it, that wasn't a remake, that wasn't a, a, a spin-off, was 2008. It is now seven years later in 2015. So of course things have changed and Atlas is producing a game on new hardware. So just from that point alone, I was just like, man i mean it's, it's just crazy everything just seems more alive this time around and you know we know how to use camera angles and people are a bit more expressive this time around you know it, it's just it's it's great and we saw um how moving around in the open world seems to be a bit more interesting um like I said, it goes back to the whole dynamic aspect um and even when you get into like the combat in the game, everything you know. It looks more entertaining, to say the least. It looks more cinematic and, and, and pretty to look at it. And that's something I don't, I don't mind at all. Uh, so as far as the style of the game goes, I think it looks great. And, you know, it's, it's the, the whole quirkiness aspect of that Persona 4 intro. No, I'm not going to dance again. Um, they, they just took that, kept it, went to another direction, though. Um, so while Persona 4 had the quirky, everybody, stop it, stop it. Um, well, everyone had their own thing that they were doing there. This one seems a bit more sophisticated and classical, if that makes any sense in this weird fanboy um, interpretation of the Persona 5 trailer. So I thought that was pretty cool. Everyone's got, everyone there has got the moves. They got the moves like Jagger. Um, everyone's so damn flexible in that thing too. I don't know how that dude lifted his leg up and then just went like that. I'm like, ooh, ooh, ooh. He couldn't steal your biz, just saying. Moving on to some of the other things that 
I think people were kind of complaining about this goes back to I'm sorry I'm just stretching my legs I've been standing up for so long um, this goes back to what people were saying about um, worried about the game because while people thought it was going to be a carbon copy of Persona 4 now people are thinking that it's going to be nothing like Persona 4 one main aspect that I heard a lot of people talking about was that social links might not make a return this time around now I haven't done too much research on Persona 5 since the trailer came out you know I had a lot of stuff going on um, but in the event that social links were indeed taken out or they're being replaced with something or changed in any capacity, that's not the biggest deal in the world to me when it comes to it. Because check this out. If you're playing in a hundred hour RPG, which is what these games are, they're pretty damn long to say the least. Um, if you're playing this game for so long, the social link aspects aren't the main reason why I'm playing it. I'm playing the game for the combat system, I'm playing the game for the story, especially in an RPG. Now, while the social link aspect was a really awesome feature and I loved the way it was implemented in Persona 4 Golden, um, I loved how much you can just spend time with people. It made it feel a lot more personal and close to home um, when you're making these relationships with these people because it's not just, oh, you do a task for me, we're all cool and everything. You spend time with these people. You get to know these people. You get to see their struggles. And it was some really deep shit that happened in Persona 4 with some of these social links. So I completely understand why people are saying that if it's not going to be in the game, I, I just I, I can't even. But on the opposite of the spectrum, if it's changed in any way or removed, it's not going to kill the game for me. It really isn't because I'm sure they're going to be doing a lot more things to keep you interested in entertaining. Considering this game's been in development for so long, they better keep me entertained outside of just the story. But again, like I said, we don't know 100% the details. Maybe they did come out and say something that I'm just missing. You guys are probably going to correct me down below in the comments section. But, you know, I just I don't think there's too much to worry about so far based on on um, some of the gameplay changes. However, there is one thing that I want to comment on that I'm kind of skeptical about, and um, it's the stealth mechanics and the way you're moving around the dungeon. While it is a lot more dynamic and interesting than Persona 4 as well, everything looks the damn same. I'm just kind of worried about how the stealth aspect is going to play into the game. I understand that everybody's a cat burglar, so we got to, you know, add some stealth mechanics. You know, we're going to make this, you know, Metal Gear Solid Persona Edition or whatever. But I, I just don't know how it's going to work with the gameplay. I mean, you see how this dude was just going around like, choo, 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 you know, and that looked cool and everything. And he was just hopping off of the chandeliers. But in what way is this going to enrich the gameplay outside of, you know, hey, we can do this cool stuff and... Is it going to devolve into nothing but, oh, you know, once a dungeon, you have to do this. And it's like, yippee, I feel like a cat burglar. Man, if I wanted to do stealth in a very, very cool fashion, I would play Metal Gear Solid. I would play Splinter Cell. I, I don't, I, 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 I really hope I'm wrong, but it just looked kind of weird to me. I just, like, what aspect is this going to play? Is it going to be more than just dungeons? Are you actually going to be going to places and doing things like hmm that actually seems kind of interesting i mean you just go and you got to secure some treasure without getting alerted but then again this is metal gear solid persona edition actually maybe it'd be more like thief i guess but yeah i i, I, I assume that um that aspect of the game i'm gonna have to wait to see more on in tandem with the social link aspect and some of the other things because while they did show us gameplay, they didn't show us everything. And knowing Atlas, it's going to be another 16 years before we see another trailer for Persona 5. But from what we've seen so far, I definitely like a lot of things about Persona 5. I'm happy as a Persona fanboy, um, but I am still skeptical about certain things. I don't think they set a release date for the game yet, but it is coming out this year, definitely, and North America is getting uh, the localization, I believe, around the same time Japan is. I think that's what they confirmed at the PlayStation Experience back in December. Um, so we'll know soon enough when this game is coming out. Probably summer for Japan, and then maybe like late summer, early fall for us. And in the event that Europe doesn't get the localization around the same time, best believe Atlas don't pull that bullshit again. We don't need it. It's already a stain. You want another stain? You know, that was, that was, that was a spinoff game, so people let it go. This is the main game, man. Ain't gonna let that shit fly. Ain't gonna fly. I can just see it all, man. Just like a fly on the wall and you just slap it, man. It, I, I just th quoted Thousand Foot Crutch right there. That's awesome. But regardless of that, people, those are my weird 
thoughts on Persona 5's debut trailer. I really liked it as a Persona fanboy, but there are some things I'm kind of worried about. What did you guys think of the trailer? Post it down below in the comments section. I'm a GS signing out, and like always, I will catch you guys later. Peace. In like less than 24 hours, we had so many people out there already do Persona 5 cosplays and Persona 5 fan art, like, no. Next, these people are gonna start shipping characters. We don't even know any of these women yet. You're already calling them your waifu, like, maybe we do need to remove social links.